What's up guys, Russ Lyman here, and I'm actually in New Mexico visiting my buddy George, and he has a really cool game room, so wanted to give you guys a tour, so come on. Russ, what you doing? Russ, what you doing? Russ, what you doing? Let's find out. What's up guys? I'm in New Mexico hanging out with my buddy George and I decided to film his game room tour. So, let's check it out. Hey Russ, what you doing? Come on in. Mexico Russ um, and your viewers so this game room here as it stands is kind of new to us as well everything just got moved uh, from another room to here maybe you guys saw a little bit of a mess in the first shot of Russ coming in uh, and that's what it is we're re uh, really happy to have the room in this uh, area now of the house and I think this is where it's gonna stay as far as expansion goes I don't think we're gonna expand uh, very much anymore we're gonna limit ourselves to this space here so when you first walk into the game room, uh, what we've got here is an amiibo and action figure collection. Uh, we really like uh, amiibos and Ninja Turtles, so that's mainly what we have. As you can see here, uh, most of the amiibos have been opened. The few that are still in the box are the ones that have held up a little bit of value, so we're going to hold off and enjoy them still in the packaging for a while longer. So whenever we were uh, coming up with an idea on how to uh, have our amiibo set up, you know, at first we had used up an entire shelf shelving unit uh, to house all of these when they were all complete in box and at one point or another we decided that that needed to change if we wanted to have all of this other stuff so we figured out how to use peg boards and pegs uh, to hang up our amiibo and save a lot of space so for Ninja Turtles we do have the Toys R Us exclusive with came, which came out I think it was about seven or eight years ago we have the GameStop exclusives and we also have the Walmart ones that came out I think a couple of years ago and we do have a Walmart set open and uh, right back here maybe you can catch Mikey or one of these guys these guys are from China uh, but they are supposed to be the counterparts for the Walmart ones we just bought them to see what the quality was like so we really like to uh, play a lot of games and on a lot of systems but the one system that we really enjoyed collecting for and I guess would be our favorite is the N64 we have all of the uh, US variants and uh, we have uh, three of the Japanese versions as well. A pretty cool story on a couple of those. Uh, the Daihox N64 actually got sent as a trade slash gift from Soft Otaku in Japan as well as one of the, I can't remember if it was the clear blue or clear red, but one of those was a gift as well. And so we really, you know, those are some of the most prized items uh, in our possession at the moment. Another cool thing, uh, I think Russ posed a question earlier uh, before we started shooting, what was the first thing that we ever picked up? Uh, my brother Bubba, actually the first item he ever picked up, it's still in our collection, is this N64 at a flea market in uh, LA, uh, somewhere around the LA area in California. He paid like 40 bucks for it and uh, it was the true first true item that he got when we said we're going to start collecting, if that makes sense. It wasn't really the first thing we owned because we had a bunch of stuff from when I was a child, but he paid around 40 bucks for this system at the flea market. So here on the N64 shelf, uh, we decided to do this one next because it is a complete North American set. Uh, we do have some Japanese titles as well. I'm not sure where those are hanging out. Uh, they're hanging out somewhere, but those were actually all a gift from Soft Otaku as well. The story behind all of these complete in box N64s is that I think on average, if we look back at the spreadsheet, we've paid about $4 a piece total because, you know, we found cartridges loose and then uh, boxes and manuals, everybody willing to give uh, good deals on Facebook for trades and things like that. Uh, we do have, of course, I think here, you know, we've got Turok 2 uh, demo only. This is now, I think, between a $400 and $450 game. I think this is the most expensive game that we own in the collection. and. 
you know, uh, I think the hardest game to find for us ultimately in the end was International Superstar Soccer 2000, which uh, this just worked out grand that they were in that order right now. All right, and of course, you know, we've got uh, the retail, the most expensive game is uh, Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut. Um, this one, we actually at PRGE got for about 120 cash after trade because we had a bunch of stuff for trade and they were really awesome with the trade. And then this game here is slowly becoming the second um, most expensive game and, and hardest to find on the N64, and that's a Super Bowling. So yeah, we've got all of those games here, obviously. And we do have a bunch of Japanese games, like I said, I just don't know where, where they're all hiding right now. So now I welcome you to one of our favorite corners in the game room, and uh, it's the Mega Man corner. We're going for a complete North American uh, set, and we're seven games short right now. Uh, very much like with the N64 collection, uh, Mega Man is one of my favorite series of all time. I remember going to Toys R Us and buying Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 5 uh, when I was little, and I did receive Mega Man 1 and 6. Never owned 3 or 4. 3 is now one of my favorite games um, ever made. But uh, here, here we have what is probably one of the most expensive uh, shelves in our game room because this Mega Man 8 is now over 300 bucks. Mega Man X4 on the Sega Saturn is uh, close to 200 now. And then you have the complete in box uh, one through six on the NES as well. Uh, showcased here is a Mega Man 2 that was bought in Portland, signed by Mark Erickson who uh, drew the artwork on, the, on the, the infamous artwork on the cartridge in the box. And it was gifted to me by uh, the Portlandian or Stumptown Retro, John, uh, over from Portland. He was kind enough. I think this was like six or seven years ago already. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> but he bought the cart, got it signed, and sent it on over to me. And then, side note, last year at Portland Retro Gaming Expo, we actually ran into Mark Erickson and his wife. Great story. <laughs> Tell the story. That was a pretty good story. Honestly. I have it in the recap video, but we basically were in the parking lot packing up for the first day and Mark Erickson's wife came over and needed jumper cables because his car had died. Uh -huh. And we were like, sorry, we don't have any. And Mark had came over and he was like, um, oh, did they have cables? And she was like, oh no, these guys are useless. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't mean it like that and she felt terrible but the next day at the show we, we and, talked and to her and we just like we we're like oh man or whatever like we just walked off like it was no big deal and and uh just left it at that we were right. telling the story as we were driving on the way home and then the next day yeah what, she, what happened she felt so bad them. i just went over to the talk to them because i wanted to buy an art print and she was like oh my god i felt so bad yeah. i'm and, so glad you came i wanted to apologize yeah and, was like, oh, and he no signed deal, signed man. her prints <laughs> i ended up getting um mega man 2 box art as well and then i got um space space harrier so another item that um uh, we got for free after doing some trade. Actually, you know what? I, I sold a, a Poke, uh, Pikachu N64 on eBay, and then with that money, I turned around and paid you for it, so you can get it for me. <laughs> that was uh, Tron Bond. I got it for a sweet deal. I think you got it with your discount for like $129. I think it was like $130. Right, and came then, into Retro Games Plus. Yeah, yeah, and of course, we had sold uh, that system with an expansion pack for like $150. So actually, I got like $10 after fees for, for buying this. So <laughs> isn't that a win? <laughs> um, and then... I have received these, uh, or I have been given these Super Famicom games. It's uh, Mega Man Soccer, Mega Man X, and Mega Man X2 uh, from Dr. Nintendo as well. He always has the Super Famicom games, and he knows how much I love Mega Man. Um, down here we have Mega Man Battle Network. Uh, Mega Man Battle Network 1, which I'll pull out here really quick for us, um, was sold to me by our good friend Johnny Mono over in Portland. And at the time that he sold it to me, he sold it to me for 30 bucks. And I knew that was a fantastic deal. And now I think it's getting close to 100 complete in box. So that was really nice of him. He had beaten it, played it, and he was like, you know what? I don't need it. You're a Mega Man fan. You know, take it for a good deal, which I jumped on really quick. Um, I'm missing, I think, three, three or four of those complete in box. I have Mega Man Zero, um, one, two, and three back here. And let me tell you, I beat one, two, three, and four. I will never play them again. One is brutal. I, you know, I like to play the series over. If I play it all, I gotta play it all again. 
I'll never play that series again. One was just too brutal. So on this shelf here, you know, we've got a bunch of our handheld stuff, and then uh, the Wii and the Wii U. We do like our modded Game Boy Advances. Um, we once you go mod, you really don't go back. I mean, it's so awesome to play on those. On this next shelf, we have our Atari 2600 games, Genesis, um, some some guides, and then the GameCube stuff down on the bottom. But uh, what I really like about this shelf, other than the Sega CDX we got last year in Portland, is the Sega Nomad. Uh, I thought it was a really interesting story. Uh, Bubba, my brother, he he asked me one day, hey, uh, this guy has a Game Boy for sale on the Facebook Marketplace and he wants 15 bucks for it. And I told him, let me see a picture of it. Let's see the quality. He sends me a picture and it's a Sega Nomad. So the guy thought he had a Game Boy or whatever, 15 bucks. That's the best 15 bucks we spent that day for sure. On these fa uh, final two shelves, we got PlayStation Nation. We got some Xbox down on the bottom. Uh, we got very few uh, Dreamcast games on some of these shelves, maybe in the shots. Um, you can see there's there's games stacked like this, and that's because they haven't put been put uh, in alphabetical order. Uh, one of our favorite series, uh, second to Mega Man, is Uncharted. So we do have all the Uncharted uh, collector's editions, and uh, of course, uh, we're Call of Duty players. So we do have you know the mini fridge uh, collection or uh, edition or whatever, and so we uh, we really take pride in our PS3 collection. It's it's uh, to us one of the fav our favorite systems uh, that we own. And fun fact, guys, uh, George actually sent me out my first PlayStation 3. I couldn't afford one, and I wanted the experience. He sent me it out with the Uncharted game. So he was like, you really have to check out this series. And I definitely fell in love with it. I, pl I played all three. I got the fourth one on PS4, and you know, I was super grateful that you were willing to ship out a, a full system to me. <laughs> And here uh, we have another section or, or a shelving unit that's uh, really one of our favorite areas because if there's anything else that we're going to try and go for uh, as complete of a set as we can, it's going to be the NES. And uh, this is a system that I grew up playing on. We really love our homebrews. We've been able to pick up uh, quite a few at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. And uh, really quick here, uh, Russ is going to uh, show a clip of a video of a uh, do-it-yourself. Uh, for these custom dust sleeves that we have here. We've seen quite a few of them floating around as of late, and they're even for sale. If you guys want to do this kind of work, I think we have mini boxes, we have Game Boy dust sleeves. Uh, we worked on those, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, Russ? We kind of met me. like that way too, almost. <laughs> yeah, we kind of met through the dust sleeves. Um, I believe he still has the downloadable files. If he does, he'll share them with you for free, and you can uh, do these, just buy some cardstock, and boom, you've got them. And of course, uh, the last thing, the last part, other than the TVs behind me and the game room, are all of our box stuff, which is up up above on top of the shelves. Uh, we got PS3, PS4, PS2. We have a PS1 somewhere in that corner, which is just stacked with, with a bunch of our box stuff. And up there, uh, that area is my favorite area. You know, we've got a couple SNES and a couple, I think, three NES systems in the box. And then from there starts a barrage of we got some Wii, Wii U stuff mixed in there, but all those Pong machines that are up there, we actually bought in one lot for a really, really, really great price. I think there's even an Intellivision boxed up there. Um, one final tidbit up in that corner, Russ will show you guys. Uh, there's a, a, a boxed peripheral ca called the Flight Sim or Flight Commander Control for the Atari 2600. I uh, looked it up the other day, it's over 120 bucks. I didn't even know that, but we have it sitting up there and it's it's like it looks really great. Maybe we'll do maybe we'll do some QB roll or something here in a bit. So the last section of this video here of this room tour um, will be of the area where we actually play. Uh, what I really like about our game room right now uh, that, that hasn't been true in the past is that it's functional. We can sit here and actually play the games. We have a, a large Samsung HD TV, it's a flat screen. It's not wide, uh, but we can do component cables to it. I find that it's uh, the best uh, game to TV on. We've got a smaller Emerson. We do have a Sony up above that we do our PS3, PS4 uh, gaming, and we have a smaller Vizio as well. Uh, the Vizio and the Emerson are, are mostly used for uh, testing items that we're gonna sell. And uh, we also have a small assortment of the, of the systems that we tend to play the most on this entertainment center. Uh, the entertainment center could use some work and it will. It's gonna, maybe uh, next time Russ visits, we can do, uh, <laughs> do, a do it on yourself, it. yeah. <laughs> on, on painting it black, sanding it down. Uh, but we really enjoy this side. And, and another awesome item that there's just so many is a, a PS3, a dev kit that we 
that we have, that we've had for a while, and it's an item that you don't really see every day. Where'd you pick that one up from? You know what? Bubba got it. I don't even know. I don't okay. ask those kinds of questions, you know? <laughs> I, I don't know where, I don't want to know where he's been on the dark web. <laughs> Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the uh, game room tour of George's place here, George and Bubba's uh, game room. Yeah. And there's a lot, lot to take in. Um, we're going to get back to playing some video games, and then we're off on a road trip to Portland Retro Gaming Expo. It's going to be an awesome trip. Thank you guys for watching. See y'all later. Later. I'm Russ Lyman, and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> get out. And I want to give a super shout out to all my Patreon supporters, Dan Buchanan, Joey Ellis, George Sandoval, Joseph Riviera, Nintendo, Joe CV, David Apuzo, Maynard, Brian Culpepper, TechWizX, Retro Bros, Matthew Hannigan, 1UP John, Die Hard Gamer Bros, Alex Kaz, and everyone on my Patreon. Link below if you want to join, and I'll see you later.